Hey, Clone Club. Did that episode seriously just happen? I don't think my heart can take it. First things first, my name is Mel, and I'm going to talk about episode 306 titled Certain Agony of the Battlefield, which aired May 23rd, 2015. And the title is right, Certain Agony Indeed, and I am referring to what happened to Paul. I just want to forget that this episode ever happened because of Paul's fate. So while I'm on Paul, we learn a lot about his motives and his motivations in this episode, and rightfully so, as it's his last, as his life ends with a heroic explosion in Dr. Cody's office after being stabbed and shot at, repeatedly, I might add. It figures that right when I get my Paul and Sarah Shipper heart going for this episode, it comes to a complete end with his death. I mean, there was a lot of shipper moments between these two in this episode alone. I saw a comfort connection between the two like I had back in episode 107, just in reverse, with Paul freaking out over Sarah's condition while Sarah's trying to seek the smallest comfort from Paul without it seeing too obvious. I mean, did you see that slight hand-holding scene between them in that infirmary? I mean, it was great until Paul had to pull away before Dr. Cody caught notice of it. But in this episode, Paul also confirmed to Sarah that she is the one that he loves, he was in love with, not Beth. And shortly after he ensures himself that Sarah escapes with no chance of her returning and stepping into his suicide mission against Dr. Cody and Rudy, he sets that mission in motion. Now, I was scared when Paul was stabbed by Miller during their fight, which ended in Miller getting his neck snapped. And then I started freaking out when Paul locked the grate behind Sarah and walked off after confessing his feelings for her. And when I saw Paul just sitting in that office, my tears started to well up and they just kept flowing after the shots were fired at him. I am going to miss Paul. I felt like we barely saw him in season 2 compared to how often we saw him in season 1. And then we were just getting him back in season 3. And now he's gone. Now I really need to turn to fan fiction to get my shipper fix on Sarah and Paul. Could someone write an episode alteration where Paul lives in this one? Please, I would read it just to get rid of this heartache I am feeling. And... Aside from Paul, let's get to Sarah. Now, there are actually a lot of parallels I found in this episode for Sarah. When we first start the episode off, Sarah finds herself alone at the camp before she finds Kira roaming through the the alleyways, I guess you can call them. Now, I immediately wondered if Sarah was dreaming and if it was like when Helena dreamed of her own baby shower back in the season 3 premiere. I half expected Sarah to wake up and she would be in her own wooded box with holes like Helena did. However, when the sequence continued forward to Sarah finding herself strapped down with a tube connecting her neck to Rudy's arm for a blood transfusion, only for her to wake up and find a bandage on her arm. Now that sequence got me thinking back to episode 105, when Sarah initially thought she dreamed of doctors examining her in her sleep, only to realize later on that it was actually true. It seemed like the same thing was going on with Sarah again in this episode uh, when she told Paul that she knew that Dr. Cody did something to her during the night. Then Dr. Cody later confirmed that she did inject two units of Rudy's blood into Sarah. And apparently it was a test to see if Sarah would be the exception when all other women have failed. Um, Dr. Cody's um, trials. And that was another thing that was considered, or not considered, that was discovered in this episode, apparently the neurological defect in the caster clones is connected to a contagious disease that is sexually transmitted where the infected becomes sterile. The bloodshot eyes were meant to be one of the symptoms of having the, this disease. I think Kazima said a rare protein was behind it. And it was found in um, Seth's brain and in um, samples from Gracie. And science got a little confusing for a first run through of the episode, but I will definitely go back to revisit for revisit it for that explanation. But first time through is confusing. 
Anyways, but I believe Paul had accused Dr. Cody of sterilizing women in this fashion. It was like a human human trial run or something. And when and she asked the caster clones to record all data of those they had intimate relations with, it's because she would then follow up on them to see if they produced any of the symptoms the contagious um thief disease would bring out in them. And so that means Gracie is now sterile. And Dr. Cody admits to doing this and to the fact that Sarah seemed to show immunity to the sterilization. Apparently Dr. Cody didn't engineer this disease in the caster clones. It was already there. It's something she found. And it's apparently something that both clone sets have in which it causes the Leo clones to be sterile in the involving the fallopian tubes, I think. Yet for some reason, Sarah was the exception to the results. Now I wonder if they did the same to Elena or maybe they didn't because she's already pregnant and they didn't want to risk the pregnancy. But as if that wasn't enough of a discovery, Paul realizes that someone wants to make this contagious disease into a bioweapon. And it seems like Sarah will secure that bioweapon possibility since she's not, she didn't seem affected by it or not in the same she reacted badly to it as if like um she uh, like she was having an allergic reaction but it wasn't like she, she didn't experience anything that the other woman had is what I'm trying to get at but basically that whole thing reminded me of the familiar's plan in season 2 of the TV show Dark Angel when I think of a bioweapon outbreak like that now, at the end of the episode, we see many soldiers at the caster camp dead, with Mark and Rudy as the last caster clone standing. And we have Seth, or not Seth, we have Sarah, my bad, reuniting with Helena in the tunnels that Paul sent her down. Also on the caster clones, I think Paul mentioned that there were six of them. So if that's the case, that would be Mark, Rudy, Miller, Seth, Parsons, that's five. Who's the sixth one? Is that someone we haven't met before or am, I, or am I forgetting someone? Let me know in the comments below, please. Or if, correct me if I'm wrong, if Paul did say six of them. Because he said he wanted to save the lives of six soldiers. Now on to some side plots. Uh, we see more progression with the relationship between Kazima and Shay. And we discover that it's Delphine that has been keeping tabs aka stalking the new cover new couple um now i can't now i can't tell if initially the target was kazima or shay but both have been photographed together and it seems like possibly some video footage was taken too talk about reaching or talk about reacting to a breakup to an extreme especially when delphine is the one that broke up with kazima in the first place and then Shay asking who Sarah was to Kasima was only brought up because Kasima had said Sarah's name in her sleep. I believe that was the explanation. I didn't quite catch it. But on to Allison and Donnie, who had their own twerk dance party in their underwear while money is falling all around them. It was a ridiculous yet funny sequence to see. Aside from their dance party that was interrupted by their daughter and Poor little Gemma having a walk in on that scene. But the couple have a meeting with Jason Kellerman about possibly expanding their part of the drug business. Initially, Jason just wanted them to pay off their debt to him and then give back his business. But um, the Hendrickses want to stay in business. And Donnie almost screws it up with his big car purchase. But Allison manages to save the business proposition by, by sharing her plans to take over her mother's business. It, now, Allison clarified that she only hated working at her mother's shop because of how it operated. Now, I sense a family feud in there somewhere in the future for that, for that store. Now, we see Rachel again, and she's painting when Felix comes in to question her about Sarah's location. Since in Felix's mind, Rachel must know something about Castor's existence. Because she seems to have a lot of secrets about everything. Now I've got to say, Felix was very intense in that scene. As he badgers Rachel, Rachel into some answers. 
which she doesn't give as she grows uncomfortable and begs to be let out. Even Scott was uncomfortable by the turns of, turn of events that Felix unfolded. Now, I really love this scene for Felix because it truly showed how desperate he was to find Sarah, and for him, it's been five days since he's last heard from her. And so it was great to see that level of intensity from Felix. And then shortly after the fiasco of a visit, Scott noticed the symbols within Rachel's paintings, and we later, he later realizes that they are the same symbols in Professor Duncan's notes and that book that he left for, Cons- for Kasima, or initially left for Kiara, who gave it to Kasima. So Scott tells Kasima about the, his suspicions of Rachel possibly knowing her father's code. Now, which code is he referring to, or is it the master code? Because I remember professor duncan saying there were many codes in his cipher now last but not least a clone that i was surprised to see appear was beth and she appeared in the form of sarah's hallucinations when she was dealing with her bad reaction to rudy's blood so because we see a hallucinated version of beth I thought it was great either way because we still get to see a version of Beth aside from old video footage and her walking off the train platform. And with it, we see snippets of the pilot episode where it's Sarah and Beth on the platform together or if, or it's Paul and Beth in those um, video um, home videos together. We saw many snippets of those clips within the hallucinations of Sarah meeting Beth and then it was also great because of Paul the end of Paul's storyline and how Sarah was bringing Beth up to him wondering if where he stood with her and stuff like that which is why he told Sarah later on that he didn't love Beth he loved her as in Sarah so the fact that we were ending Paul storyline in this episode i thought it was truly great to all to have them include beth in this way so that we can also get a clear idea of how beth and paul were together before sarah ever came into it but that was a clone meeting i never thought we'd see i thought the only way we'd see Beth would be flashbacks of her with Kasima or her with Allison or her with Art or her with Paul. I never thought we'd get Beth and Sarah again after the platform scene. So I just thought that was really great. It was truly unexpected, but very welcome. But I wonder if we'd get any more things like that. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. So I believe that's it for the episode that I wanted to talk about or that's all I can think about at the moment to talk about. So as far as predictions go, I still think something's going to happen between Allison and Jason again, but it seems like Allison will be focusing on either election things or drug-related things, which is all right in a sense, but when will Allison be brought back into clone-related things? And I think we'll see... More Shay will probably learn more about her as she grows closer to Kasima, and I still hope she's not connected to Dyad or to Project Caster. I mean, as far as we know, Shay could be the very daughter of the Project Caster's director that Paul kept referring to in this episode, and that is a far-fetched idea that I just thought of right now. Yet I wouldn't put it past them to have her be connected to Caster, yet not directly connected, like Delphine was connected to Dyad. So anyways, with Sarah and Helena reunited again, I think it'll be easier for them to get back to civilization, and the teaser promo for 307, which is the next episode, shows a confrontation between Helena and Mrs. S, so I'm assuming the twins do make it back to civilization at some point. So I believe that is all. And I'm still reeling from Paul's death and the death of Sarah and Paul's ship. My heart can't take it. And I'm probably going to go to fan fiction right after making this video. So with that said, what did you guys think of the episode? 
What was your favorite moment or character? And what part could you do without? For me, Paul's death, I could do without that. Although I did like that he caused the explosion of all the scientific research that was in Dr. Coetti's office, and that included the baby skeleton of the um, Prolethean leader's dead son. Um, so uh, let me know in the comments below. Um, I'd love to hear about it. Um, just talking about it would be fantastic with other people who love this show as much as I do. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and to share this with other members of the Clone Club. Until next time, sorry, until next time, I'm tired, but have a great day, everyone. Bye.